Greetings, Skyfarers. Welcome to another episode of Sunless Skies from Cobalt Thoria. And in this episode, we're gonna level up. Boom. We'll take a facet. Ugh. Now, if I remember right, we need masks. We need masks. Badly. Hmm. We can also get over sort of a milestone if we do fists. Actually, we can get over a milestone if we do mirrors, too. Hmm. Sort of saving that one. What do we have here? So we can get Tales from Tales of Terror. I think what we're going to do is a spell in prison. And we'll take the extra iron. So that both of these get up over a milestone. I don't know if there's actually like a set thing here. Like um, in a lot of games, you see that like new abilities unlock at round numbers and stuff like that. So, you know, 37 is as good as 39. Um, but then once you hit 40, that's when stuff unlocks. And I want to get these base numbers over so that... The way that works is that the base number is um, um, our stat, and the, the plus number has to do with our crew. So we'll do a spell in prison. The judge, the stony faced, con the judge stony faced, condemned you to new Newgate, the, st the stalactite prison of old London. Unfortunately, I can't speak, apparently. Um, and. Uh, it's dark, it was thick as tar, it sells small as pantries. How did you spend your days there? So we can say we, uh, we served our time quietly. You notched each day, dismal, on your cell wall. You steered clear of the monsters and the meek they preyed upon. You dreamed of the day of your release. Or we could be better the wolf than the lamb. You ruled your corridor like a robber king. Even the guards knew better than to push you. Your punishments were less than you deserved. Yes. Sounds ominous. Man, we are level 16. That's crazy. Oh, what the... Mm. You know what? I freaking hate these storms. I'm just gonna fight the... Road. Actually, can we get fuel here? We can. I hate these stupid storms. Always pushing us in the direction that we don't want to go. Whoa, it's actually increasing our supplies. How does that work? I didn't know that happened. These arboreal winds are lush and green. Fronds hang like curtains. Leaves loll, fat as giant's tongues. Why is it still affecting us all the way over here? Okay. Now we have to get something for these guys. Pristine pair of wings. That is what we will get. This is totally infested. Uh, the princess encourages you not to waste any part of the bee, especially the part she needs. Alright, we'll grab that too. The collection of bees. 
Collecting the soul of a course to be swarm is traditionally an onerous endeavor. Made a little easier by the destruction of the incognito princess uh, that the incognito princess provides. She stands by her porthole, nose nuzzling against the glass, while the spectral manes of the swarm jostle to get close to her. Oh, you little people already love me, she whispers, thrilled. While the princess is bonding, you have a more arduous task, slowly unwinding a soul from the bee's not-quite-corpse, while avoiding the last futile twitches of its sting. Learning about the Incognito Princess, the Incognito Princess seeks something borrowed from the devils at Carillon. You'll need two more bee souls to acquire it. Okay, so we need three. That's really interesting. So the spectral remains, so they're dead. They're sort of ghosts. And yet she's sort of a, a Disney princess for their spirits. She's sort of a Disney princess for everything, it seems. But she seems, like, very deathy, if that's, like, a word. <laughs> like, like she made a, a throne out of starling corpses. And I think that they willingly gave up their lives to become part of her chair, basically. Like, the, the royalty in this game are really weird uh, and fascinating. I love them. I think they're amazing. Amazing characters. Are two souls. Oh, interesting. No, that is the same message except for this. The Incognito Princess seeks something borrowed from the Devils at Corillon. You need one more B soul to acquire it. That should be all. The Incognito Princess has all the B souls that she needs. She wishes you to head to Corilla. Well, we can do that later. For now. Oh, an inconvenient aunt appears from her. Okay. Well, not enough time to read through all that. trying to read and drive at the same time, so. All right. Sentries run through the streets, heralding Doom's approach. All prophets who proclaimed Anchorus's gospel of all shall be well. Wait. Uh, we'll be hiding in their homes until long after the attack. The Anchoress's gospel of all shall be well. Of all shall be well. Okay. Rally to Titania's defense. There's no defeating the hive. But you can limit the damage it causes. Or you can flee the bee apocalypse. Not your problem. Well, we got plenty of iron. Let's do it. Silence in the space of half an hour. The chorister hive fills the air with stingers and song. The titanians resist as best they can. Once the hive has collected its nectar and the titanians' homes are ravaged, it leaves again for the furthest parts of the reach. You've lost two crew. That's unfortunate. But we got a... Gourd of course, or nectar. Onwards. All right, let's take a peek at the this thing first. This oh, bronze wood. Hmm. Fortunately, no space for it.
Interesting. Hmm. Valentine Square. Over on this landing. Uh, let's take a peek at the art exhibition. Oh, nice. Got rid of our terror. Attend the exhibition. Rickety wooden stages showcase the students' latest work. Basking in culture. You spend several pleasant hours surrounded by art. Much of it painted with pigments sourced from the reach's unique flora and inspired by the Corster bees. Once the visitors have moved away, however, they immediately launch into lengthy diatribes about the many ways they could have done better. We'll certainly write a port report. Uh, oh yeah, we got a settler. You're here. You've made good time. Wow, they actually set up for once. A breeze wafts the sweet... <coughs> excuse me. A breeze wafts the sweet perfume of wild flower in your direction. Lovers race in by various states of undress. A giggling nudist capers after them. The settler is not in her bunk nor are her belongings. She has left an envelope full of sovereigns on her pillow, a note of thanks. One of your crew later reports finding her picture in Prosper newspaper. There's a bounty on her head. <laughs> okay. Delivering a settler. You deliver a settler. If you visit Queen's Cross and Poor Prosper, you can pick up another. Um, or inspire a new crop to travel. There's no longer a settler on your locomotive. We have 150 sovereigns. You have one recent event, a settler settled, and 100 new experience. Wonderful. Let's go back to Oberton's Landing. Okay, here's what we can't do. Advise on, ta on Titania's next upgrade. There's much to be done. If the founders can only agree on what? The current funding progress is only 10%, and the port damage is 10%. Titania must be fully repaired and funded to start a new project. You could contribute funds to Titania. The bigger the port gets, the more opportunities it will offer. Titania must be fully repaired to fund new construction. We we'll meet with the Rhapsodic Mayor. As the first among founders, she gets Titania's only office. The mayor's only available when the port is undamaged, so we have to we have to repair. Only 10? So pay for all port repairs. It's fine. That's only 10. Jeez. Do it. The mayor's speechless. This will be more than sufficient. Thank you. We've lost 10 sovereigns. And we're kind of rich at this point, at least by the perspective of these, uh, like, first area characters. What is this wit and vinegar? Find the Midnight Rose. Oh, that's right. Find the Midnight Rose who trade in red honey. They have their base here. The gloomy middleman wants you to find out why the honey stop, uh, why the honey supply has dried up. Yeah, let's do it. So this is like a drug that they have. Somewhere amidst the garrets and galleries of Titania, Hide the Midnight Rose. They make red honey. An old London vice. The manner of its creation is secret, but it is rumored to require a breed of rose first grown in hell. Jeez. <laughs> Bees and the memory of harvested from caged subjects. And the memories harvested from caged subjects. Imbibing red honey allows you to live those memories. To ransack the contents of another's heart. Oof. Jeez. That's messed up. Okay. So you can employ the arts of deduction. Search for clues, tales, suspicious characters. Or we could ask the incognito princess if she knows where to find them. 
You've heard that the royal family were enthusiastic devotees, devotees of red honey. Perhaps she can help. Or we can engage in a trade of gossip. You're well supplied with a sort of salacious rumors that Titanians adore. The higher your affiliation bohem, and the less your and the less your saloon stewed gossip the less saloon stewed gossip this role will require. Or you can speak to the Bohemians of your acquaintance. You are celebrity in Bohemian circles. If you will require an introduction to the Rose, you need only ask. So we don't have enough Bohemia. Um, actually, one thing I want to do here before I forget is I want to change... Oh, no, she's already... Okay. I wonder if we could get enough Bohemia. All right, um, Academy, I oh, want Academy. We could really max out our establishment though. Gloomy guidance? What is that? Oh man, I want, I want gloomy guidance. But it's villainy. Ah. Shit. I mean, I, I'd really like to go for Academy. Emia. Academy. You're what? Villainy. I don't want villainy. I want establishment. Establishment all the way. Establishment or Academy? I want gloomy guidance, though. <laughs> the gloomy guidance. It's kind of awesome, actually. Do it. Alright, so we have Establishment, Establishment, tons of Establishment. Ah, but it's unfortunate that we lose our Academy. That's okay. Let's go back to Oberon's Landing. Go back here. Um, back to the Incognito Princess. Like moths to a flame. Oh, honey. Uh -huh. Oh, honey made me the woman I am today. She says with a, a secretive smile. I'd be happy to help. She strides from saloon to saloon. Or salon to salon. Uh, letting a crowd of adoring poets, artists, and addicts flock to her. Within an hour, she secured you an introduction. A precarious descent of ladders leads down to the hideout, the Midnight Rose. A spiral of rickety platforms cling to the great orchid's stalk. Here, the Rose have constructed an edifice of glass, something between an orangey and a cow shed. Orangery. Orangery? It hums with bees and shivers with sobbing. Okay. Wit and vinegar. A smuggler's tale. Ask the Midnight Rose why their export of honey has slowed. The Midnight Rose are close-knit coterie that produce precise vintages of red honey. If you want to taste the bleak memories of an orphan or the excesses of a reckless libertine, they are able to provide. Their leader is an ethereal, is an ethereal apiar, 
a PRist? <laughs> a PRist? A PRist. Whatever. I don't actually know what that is. I know what Ethereal is, but... Uh, whose laced gowns are stained at the hem with grass and soil. The bees crawl lazily in her wild hair. Ask why the export of honey to London has slowed the apiarist size. I think that's a beekeeper. Accompany her as she works in the glass house. She is disarmingly frank. The red honey trade seems to be something of an open secret in Titania. The other side of the port's coin. Well, mission comes first. Let's go. Get rid of this. A problem. The revenue men, she says darkly. They've appointed a new captain to patrol the skies nearby. He used to be one of the gentlemen. The smugglers who operate out of Pan. He knows a lot of the tricks. Inconvenient. You'll need to find a way to circumvent this canny captain. Wit and vinegar. A smuggler's tale. Uh, assist the Midnight Rose with their revenue man problem. I don't know if I actually want to. Hmm. Okay. So we can hand over an unlicensed chart to assist the Midnight Rose. There are paths through the clogging undergrowth of the Reach that even this once smuggler turned revenue man will not know. It's probably the easiest way out. It will cost us an unlicensed chart. But we did just acquire one. And now that the Tackities are back in town, I'm sure we'll be getting a lot more Tackity nameplates. We could part with it and not have to smuggle stuff through the Albion Relay, which would require an upgrade to our ship, but it would also require us, in particular, uh, to go against the throne. Although, is it really going against the throne? I mean, the princess herself is a consumer of red honey. It's against the Empire, even if it's not against the throne. Like... They're clearly indulgent in these bohemian things. But it is illegal. So it's like... Yes for me, but not for thee. But at the same time, there are these really kind of messed up, like... Alien creatures in human bodies. Or in a human form. So... I mean, they're, they're kind of godlike. So maybe that's okay for them, <laughs> you know? Maybe maybe they actually know better. Maybe they know that they can handle it or that it's somehow good for their uh for their benevolent motives. Even though their their motives aren't really benevolent, but I mean they're mostly benevolent because they're sort of on the side of humanity, but at the same time they also do things like the rabbits and work world, which is like not great for the poor. <laughs> so. Um, but at the same time, I mean, like, these are, these are the creatures that are guiding humanity from the, the underground of the Sunless Sea into the sky and, like, battling the, the evils that are out there. So they're, they're guiding humanity. So even if they're sort of predatory at the same time, even if they're sort of parasitic... Uh, very much like the, the Verdant that we just dealt with. Um, yeah, they're... They're kind of... In their case, it, it's a little bit more symbiotic. We'll just say that. Okay. Um, so, I might be willing to do that. So, we could accompany her so uh, as she works through... As she works in the glass house. She's disarmingly frank. The red honey trade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we could siphon some money towards uh, creating a front for their contraband. Ooh, that's interesting. 
official activities in Titania could provide plausible cover for smuggling honey. You must be at at least fifty. Wait, you must be at least fifty percent of the way towards funding a project in Titania to do this. If you have complete completed Titania, you must assist the Midnight Rose in another way. Well, let's get to know her a little bit. Rose bushes heap against the glass and climb in thorny tangles through the greenhouse. Among them are tall cages, each occupied by a prisoner. Bees buzz in and out of their ears and sip from the corners of their eyes. The prisoners cry out and sob and plead. Look closer, the apiarist says. Around each of their necks hangs a key on a chain. They can free themselves at any time, but choose not to. They are artists, you see. They believe they must suffer if they are to one day make great art. So I can say, that's bollocks, isn't it? Art no more relies on misery than plumbing relies on NUI. Anui. Say nothing. Keep your thoughts to yourself. Or compliment her appalling ingenuity. She has, after all, managed to convince her victims that they are customers. Ugh. I'm appalled. I'm going to say it's bollocks. <laughs> she has the dignity to look awkward. Well, yes, well, they are romantics. Perhaps telling themselves this lie will give them the confidence to make something remarkable. Think of it as a placebo. The medicine was only water and sugar, but the patient still recovered. Interesting. What happens if we go back and try it again? Nothing. We wouldn't have to give up the unlicensed chart if we did this. But if we do this, does this prevent us from building something different? That is the question. So let's go back and start repair um, building some stuff. Okay, so it looks like it's a thousand per stage. And we've already we've already spent a hundred, so contribute a hundred sovereigns. A very generous donation. Contribute five hundred sovereigns. An extremely generous donation. We can fund the next stage of Titania. If you have the money, the mayor will be glad to take it. Or we can contribute a thousand sovereigns. An incredibly generous donation. Or we could return to the main dome. Enough charity for today. I think we're willing to part with it. We're, we're willing to take it to the next stage. The mayor's speechless. The Rhapsodic mayor shakes your hand. Such generosity. We will get to work at once. Actually, I shouldn't have done that. I should have put it up over... Um... Should have put it up over 50% so that we could have gone back to the um, the red honey lady. Crap. Oh well. <laughs> the port unfurls itself, welcoming you ashore. 
Titania has become a little slice of civilization in the Reach. Within its domes, visitors can enjoy a taste of Albion without all the smoke and smog and urchins spoiling the view. Interestingly enough, civilization spelt the uh, English way as opposed to the American way. I do think that the programmers... I think that this is a, a British game, but... Okay, so we can advise on Titania's next upgrade. There's much to be done. If the founders can only agree on what? Current funding progress is 100%. Port damage is zero. Let's go ahead and talk to them, see what happens. A rhapsodic mayor, stone-faced sculptor, and melancholy poet stand in a circle of Titania's ever-vocal bohemians, arguing themselves to a standstill. The, ma the mayor waves you over. Perfect timing, Captain. Listen in on the arguments. The three squabble-like artists, relentlessly, but with very well-chosen words. So, we could advocate for a salon. A place for poetry. Conversation. Tea and scones. Offers the stone-faced sculptor. Titania only has room for two projects of this size. We could advocate for a museum. Devoted to what? We'll decide later. Later. The rhapsodic mayor waves her hand at this minor detail. Something to impress, to educate, something worthy. Titania only has room for two projects of this size. We could advocate for a scientific enclave. A good friend of mine from Benthic College has been looking for a place where they can conduct their, how shall I put this, less conservative experiments. Offers the melancholy poet. I thought Root's End would be perfect. Remote. Not very flammable. Titania only has room for two projects of this size. Or we could return to the main dome. Let's t listen in on the arguments. Rebuilding Titania. All three are agreed that Titania represents a phenomenal new opportunity for art. Where they differ is on whose definition to use. At this rate, they will be lucky to agree before the dawn of a new century. Well, that is extremely unhelpful. Okay. Okay, so the scientific enclave will obviously benefit the establishment of academy. The salon w is probably going to be um, it's probably going to help Bohemia. The museum I don't even know. Would that be establishment? What is the opposite of academy? I mean, you, you can kind of you can kind of say that Bohemia would it be Bohemia an establishment? No, it's probably establishment versus villainy. And then would it be Bohemia versus academy? Because there's. I want to do the scientific enclave, I think. Put to a vote. With your support, the suggestion passes. Construction begins. The Benthic College scientific enclave is under construction. Already there are, uh, there are arguments about what form it should take. In honor of the college, the founders have given them an entire dome for their work. They should have named the dome after me. It should be Molly's Dome. 
an awareness of how often said work has a tendency to go boom, it is the furthest away from Valentine's Square. You could help decide on a direction for the Enclave. The melancholy poet is surrounded by scientists demanding to know what they should be building. Or we could return to the main dome. There's nothing more to be done here. No, we're not letting you build another clockwork sun. Ah, the melancholy poet almost looks pleased to see you. Finally, someone sensible. Help me decide uh, on which of these plans, will you? We could, we could advocate for an observatory. The skies are much clearer here than in Albion. What wonders might they see? We could advocate for a workshop. The perfect place to develop new inventions and devices. We could advocate for a great exhibition. The place for the Benthic Enclave is to show off the latest Albion technologies. Or we could leave them to their arguments. They won't be resolving this anytime soon. Hmm. Okay. Well, our main mission seems to be to figure out why the suns are dying. So that would indicate that we should do observatory. There's kind of already an observatory at the Royal Society. We could advocate for a workshop, but there's also one of those at the Royal Society. So it's like, what are these things actually going to give us? Or we could advocate for the Great Exhibition... But it doesn't seem like that's actually going to give us anything. All it is is a place to show off what's being created someplace else. At the same time, that might increase Albion's sort of influence in this area. Which we would like. But at the same time, if they're showing off Albion's technologies, it's like, can this be stolen by the Tachides who are like, right over there. <laughs> I mean, we're already in the south. And, and Lustrum is not far away. I think we're going to go for the Great Exhibition. Good, good. The melancholy poet seems to care little for the decision as long as it stays made. Do that. Hurry up. Before anyone complains. Alright. Visit the Benthic College Enclave. The Great Exhibition is open. Here the Benthic Enclave shows off the latest Albion technologies. The Great Exhibition takes up an entire dome, allowing visitors to look at all the wonders of both London and the High Wilderness. Steam engines rumble and hoot. Stolen electrical devices from the Empyreans uh, spray lightning into the atmosphere. Strange ambers of the rubbery men sit under spotlights, casting hypnotic colors as they slowly melt in the heat. Alright, well, there's a couple different things here to take away. Uh, first off, steam engines rumble and hoot. Still, so that that seems to be much more of like Albion's influence. Stolen electrical devices from the Empyrean spray lightning into the atmosphere. That feels a lot like, um, like Nikola Tesla. So it's almost like you got your steampunk Albion and your electric punk uh, Empyrean. So that's an interesting juxtaposition. Then. We have like the rubbery men. This is new. We we know about the uh, the the clay men or whatever. Now there's rubbery men. Hmm. Or we could request a boon of Titania. The Great Exhibition is a place of many wonders. You can gain a free entrance. Every captain can request a boon. This will give you five salon stewed gossip. Be sure you have cargo space. What? Salon's dude gossip doesn't take up cargo space. Well, we have no cargo space, so I'm not going to do that. We'll just let that stay for now. A 
Let's meet with the Rhapsodic Mayor. Titania's petals fill the air with perpetual perfume, but eventually you become accustomed to it. Even so, the scent is of many flowers in the Mayor's small office, which sends your senses reeling. Obviously unaffected, she sits behind her desk and gestures for you to take the other chair. We should request a petal. The phlegmatic researcher in Leadbeater and Stainrod's nature reserve has expressed interest in Titania. We'll do that. A simple request. The, may the rhapsodic mayor is only too happy to oblige. I'll have a sample sent to your engine in a moment, she says. We may not be scientifically minded here, but we do love to learn more about our wonderful flower. Experiments sanctioned by the company. You've collected a cutting of the titania petal from the phlegmatic researcher. Uh, okay. I think that... Oh, this has changed. A flower in the high wilderness. A spectacular place, isn't it? We couldn't believe that nobody else had colonized it after, well, whoever built the, all the crystal domes and spires. Honestly, I couldn't believe our luck, and the Chorister Hive descended on us. Everything has a price, I suppose. That end part is the part that changed. Uh, it seems like we've finished everything here. I'm not going to spend another thousand bucks just yet. That's a lot, even at our current... Like, we're pretty rich at this point, but it's, it's still like 10% of our income. Or 10% of our reserves, not, not even our income. So we're not going to buy another expansion just yet. Um, I am tempted just to do this. We're going to be getting a lot of tacky game plates, so... Secret ways. You and the apiarist spend a coffee-fueled night combing your chart, plotting new hidden routes for the couriers to use. The way will be dangerous. You had a few. Uh, you had to favor circuitous, little-used paths plagued by the cantle wind. But a dreadnought would never be able to would never be able to, to traverse them. The ethereal Apiaris is pleased. The gloomy metalman probably won't be, but he might be slightly less miserable. You'd better deliver him the good news. Alright, return to the gloomy middleman at London to complete this task and become a smuggler. Uh, I don't want to be a smuggler, though. You've lost one unlicensed chart, new total two. So now we have the Porf... Porphyry? Porphyry font? A veiled pavilion rests in the curve of one of Titania's great petals. Oh, we don't want to do any of these. No. Mm -hmm. Actually. We'll donate a vision of heaven. We have plenty. Maybe we'll donate five sky stories. The reason why is because they sort of indicated that there's an upper limit to what you can store by when they said um, make sure you have enough inventory for the salon stewed gossip. Well, I didn't realize that there was an inventory. It sounds like there is now. So... Maybe there's an upper limit. And it's better to spend them, get some experience and some sovereigns rather than letting them go to waste. So let's donate a vision of the heavens. Something precious, briefly glimpsed, forever remembered. A reverie. A melancholy poet sighs longingly. Such courage, my lady. Oh, to walk the paths of heaven and glut your eyes with wonders. The reward is handsome. The poet is looking admiringly. You've lost a vision of heavens. 
We got 70 sovereigns and 50 experience. Yay! And I'll donate five sky stories, I guess. I'm wondering if the limit's 50. That's why I'm saying that. Your travels have brought you to the farthest wilds of the heavens. You've seen things others can't imagine. Awe-inspiring. The melancholy poet fills a whole journal and sends for a fresh bottle of ink. Once you are finished, the poet needs a moment to think. This will need to go to someone of singular talent. Your payment is brought in. Alright, that's fine. Let's get out of here. So, uh, I believe that we're running low on time, but at the same time, I kind of want to get back to Winchester, so I am going to make that part of this episode, I think. We're just going to make a sprint straight for Winchester. Which will make the episode a little longer. Alright, we'll gain the experience, I guess. We don't need Carvester Nectar. Sweet. I am slightly concerned. Like, we've been keeping our inventories a little bit high. Like, you know, f around five. And a lot of times, some of these... Some of these things that we come across... Some of these random events... They take a lot of our either food or fuel. It did sort of indicate that the bird down below is not none too pleased with us. I don't think that we've ever actually sufficiently pissed off the burr the burrower down below. But when we pissed off the waste wraith, um they basically took all of our food, I believe. Took over food one time. Okay, we need um we need moments of inspiration more than visions of heaven. Let's do that. some tackadies in here for us to crush. I guess no such luck. No combat. This actually was a much shorter trip than I expected. I thought it would take like five minutes to get up here, but I think it took closer to like two or three.
And we're back at Winchester. Let us bank our supplies. I don't think we need our Raveling Jack right now. How many do they need? Oh, three. An opportunity. The tactics at Wolvesy Station speak in whispers of Reach Marauders trafficking in. Okay. Actually, do we have enough court reports to to give to what's his name? This guy. Hmm. Ask if he has seen. Okay, here we go. Actually, I should do this in the next episode. This episode's getting too long. So, let us uh, let's go to Wolvesy Station. Uh, we'll deliver the verdant encouragement. Drop them off with the clerics at the loading bay. They'll see it gets to its destination. I've read this before, so let's not... Yeah. Um... Oh, our crew's looking not great. Let's grab a couple crew. Two, that's fine. Um... Repair. We're only down by one. At the same time. It's fine. Okay, we'll go out of there. Uh, promise of days. I don't think there's likely to be anything in here. Okay, we don't want to do that. Victoria Market. All right, I guess we're all ready to go. Um. So, in the next episode, we'll talk to the Fatalistic Signalman. We will head on down to Carillon and Lustrum and do both of those quests. Um, and we're just kind of going to make our way around. After that, I suppose we'll do Magdalene. Uh, we'll probably skip Magdalene and Poor Prosper, and we'll hit those up on the next time that we're he heading towards Albion. But we've, we've gotten these three done already. So it's these two. And then... The Trader's Wood is sort of off on its own. I don't know if we actually have anything to do at Albion. But... Or... Not Albion. Avon. But anyway. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you have, please like. Maybe comment. Maybe share. Maybe subscribe. And uh, new episodes every day at 2 p.m. Um, Eastern... Eastern Time of US and Canada. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this, and I'll c I hope to catch you in the next episode. Bye bye.